Hello watchers and welcome back to the channel. Uh, what I have uh, here today is a package that just came in the mail today and I, I'm, you know, I'm pretty sure what it is, 90% uh, sure anyway, based on uh, what I know I've ordered. So I'm just going to uh, unpack this uh, uh, on screen. Give that a cut over there. And let's open that up. So, and, yep, that's it. It is the strap uh, that I ordered. So let me just get that open from the plastic. Okay. Well, it's good. So, two um, spring bars that comes with it, right there. And look at that. I must say, whoop, <laughs> spring bar running away. I must say, I'm quite uh, quite pleased with how it actually uh, looks and feels in person. This is, uh, as some of you might recognize, of course, a, a G-Shock, a Casio G-Shock replacement strap. Now this is definitely not uh, uh, original, at least I, I don't think so. The uh, eBay seller is Japan to Oz. Uh, it doesn't list it as original, so it almost certainly isn't. Uh, but I got this because, um, you know, my dad uh, pointed out uh, that this really now, what is a vintage uh, piece uh, that we have in our collection, this has uh, uh, gone the straps have gone very rigid and very difficult to use so I got this uh, to replace uh, the straps and I'm very pleased that it really does seem to match up so I'm gonna uh, really use my spring bar tool to install these straps and then we'll come back and do a look at this uh, this vintage piece uh, that that you know has been passed down my family uh, so you know gonna sort that out and uh, we'll be back in a moment all right so after installation here we go this is how it looks like and i gotta say i'm really quite happy with how it matches up now there's a there's a bit of a, you can see a bit of sheen uh on the resin of the case here there's there's a a, a matteness a flatness on the band i'm not sure whether that's aging related or if in fact the original uh, band would have had a sheen but this is this is not bad I can definitely uh, live with that so what we have here is a, a, a vintage a 1990s uh, early 1990s vintage Casio G-Shock DW5900 multifunction uh, watch uh, you know not long into the history of G-Shock is, is this particular watch um, now, what we have is a 47 millimeter case uh, that is 16 millimeters thick. Uh, now, in the range of uh, G-Shocks we have uh, today for men, this would be on the smaller side. In fact, I think there's some baby Gs which would be very, very close, if not the same size uh, as this particular model now at 47 millimeters. Uh, on that, you know, at that point, uh, the width is 47. Um, as with all the other G-Shocks I've reviewed, it's a screw back uh, construction, um, 200 meter water resistance, you know, already uh, really similar to almost uh, uh, or many, many of the ones that we see today. It's got that two colored LCD dial. You can see, uh, you know, the main display here in the middle uh, circle is gray, but then you've got this blue tone on the two uh, side circles there. It's mineral glass, of course. It's not going to be sapphire. In fact, I'm not sure whether any G-Shock at this uh, vintage would have uh, sapphire, uh, a black case, a black bezel with uh, colored highlights. You know, that nice, nice red, very obvious red markings there for uh, the the buttons, uh, um, and you know, it, it also has some uh, markings at the the inside. You know, to 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 show you the secondary function of the buttons. Um, that that dial has some texture on the top half of the plastic. You can see uh, Casio shock resistant alarm chronograph um, water resistant 200 meter at the bottom there. 
Interestingly, there's, there's no light uh, on this one, and that's an interesting missing missing feature here because uh, there, there were definitely uh, many Casios of this age, uh, and I remember uh, some that we had, you know, that had light, and this one this one actually doesn't. Uh, so Quartz multifunction module nine one four. It's got that classic three circles, the three eyes uh, description uh, with uh, you know time display. You can you don't know how much that comes through but that that's actually displaying a, a kind of like an analog uh, time dial there uh, in, in digital format I suppose uh, seconds on the the left uh, sorry the right uh, circle and then the mode uh, circle uh, in the middle there so just going through the functions it's, it's just I, I love the homology you know sorry homology is a biological term but I use it for Casio just to plan the design of the module, the how it works is the same or at least very consistent throughout. So what we have here is five alarms um, and I'll just play that and you can see the, those two circles activating. Right, Typical alarm sound. Uh, so five alarms, dual time there which I, I've set to uh, GMT. 24 hour countdown timer with a tenth of a second uh, accuracy or, or increments uh, there. A 24 hour stopwatch, uh, that, that, that stopwatch that counts at one one hundredth of a second and up to 24 hours. And that's that's really it. That's the functions. That's all I know. What more do you need in this day and age? Well, in, in at least in the 90s, that was really the uh, uh, par for the course uh, and I'll just show you how this uh, the timers function in the two circles there the two blue ones You can see on the on the uh, right circle. It's got that uh, uh, one second per revolution uh, action and then on the left it's the second countdown and that that that's divided into 60 segments and it counts down gradually with the seconds All right, reset it and go back to time all right. So, uh, and, and then lastly, the strap is is the resin replacement. You know, even back then it was resin, and this is a replacement strap from uh, Japan to Oz, the uh, eBay seller. Uh, you can get this uh, for well under ten dollars in, in the US, I would think. But I, I paid uh, just over ten dollars Australian because I didn't want to get it shipped from overseas. I wanted to get it quicker. I didn't mind paying a couple more bucks. Um, and interestingly, it's, it's actually 16 millimeter lug width, if you can see the lug width there, uh, but, but 26 millimeters uh, width of the band uh, where it joins the case. And then, of course, it, it, it tapers down nicely. No, not really meaningful for me to go through uh, pros and cons for you know, such a uh, classic watch. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to really say much about it, except this was one of my... Uh, uh, staples, you know, it spent many a day, many a months on my wrists in, uh, you know, in the early 90s when I was a teenager going through high school uh, before I, I stepped up or upgraded to what was my next watch that was a Tag Heuer uh, 3000 Professional. Uh, you know, it, it, it's got, I've got lots of fond memories, you know, with this uh, and it does have that awesome Casio homology, that's one uh, pro that I will mention. I'll just do a quick uh, wrist shot here. So there we go on the wrist, uh, you know, and it sits, you know, now uh, with my size, I think I, my, my wrists have gotten a bit bigger and it sits very comfortably at that size. I think as a teenager, it looks bulky, uh, but, you know, appropriately so uh, for that time period with the G-Shocks uh, uh, that people tended to use. Okay, so um, I just wanted to briefly mention uh, how does this compare with uh, modern uh, entry-level G-Shock models? So say the GA100 or the GA110, you know, two of the most popular models. Well, they don't have much on top of this. They have a backlight uh, LED uh, lighting with, uh, you know, afterglow, they call it. And then they have world time function with multiple time zones to make it more convenient to, to check uh, different time zones. And, and that's really it, you know. I mean, the, the GA100 uh, and 110s, they have a 1 1,000th of a second stopwatch, but they only have a one-second timer countdown. So that's neither here nor there. So, you know, after 
20, you know, 25 years or thereabouts. This, this is that old now that it's still ticking strong with the battery change. Um, it hasn't uh, really evolved much. And I think that that speaks more about the demands of the customer rather than uh, technology as such. Of course, the, uh, you know, the top line models have a lot more fe uh, features that they pack in, but really, you know, you don't need much more. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's really such a classic. So there we have it. Hope that you enjoyed the look at this vintage DW5900 model G-Shock. Uh, and as always, guys, uh, give us a like, subscribe, and uh, I will catch you next time.